Singers, I'm Sarah Lieb and this is SingingTV.com. Together you and I, we're making singing simple. Today's episode topic is resonance. And um, I've gotten a lot of different questions about what is resonance. If I'm looking here at some of my um, questions, there are a lot of different questions people have about uh, mixed voice and singing with different sounds and tones and things like that. So this episode we're going to talk about what resonance is and in further episodes we'll talk more about how to use our resonance. So in order for sound to resonate there needs to be empty space. For instance, if you've ever heard somebody play an electric guitar that's not plugged in, you can barely, barely hear the sound. You can hear the vibration of the string, but there's no space for that uh, vibration to, to resonate within and make sound. For instance, I've got an acoustic guitar here. If it were an electric guitar, you'd play the string and you'd hear it a little bit, but not very much. With an acoustic guitar, can you see this? Okay. Now? Okay, great. Sorry, my phone keeps buzzing. With an acoustic guitar, you've got the sound of the strings, plus you've got the body of the guitar with all the empty space inside to amplify the sound so that the sound can resonate. Same is true for most uh, instruments if you think about um, the way a trumpet works, for instance, you've got the mouth uh, here and then the body of the brass instrument. So what that means is every instrument has a source of the sound. The source of the sound on the guitar is, see if you can think of it, I'll give you a sec. All right, the source of the sound on the guitar is the vibration of the strings. You hit it with your thumb or a pick or your fingers or whatever and that causes the string to vibrate. With a trumpet, the source of the sound is the vibration of the lips up against the mouthpiece. So you'd go But, once again, just making that sound, of course, doesn't make all that much noise, um, but into the instrument, the body of the brass um, trumpet is where the sound resonates. Same with the body of the guitar, a violin, you can sort of picture the body of a violin, a viola, a cello, an upright bass. Um, what's really, really neat about the voice is that we have, the, the space that our resonance is in is in our body. So think about it for a second, see if you can think of where the source of our sound is. The source of our sound is where the vocal folds are, right here behind your Adam's apple or the thyroid cartilage, that's where your vocal folds sit, just like this and back, together at the front and apart at the back, or you know, apart when we're breathing, closed when we're talking or singing, and they vibrate together like this. It's that vibration that's the source of our sound, just like the vibration of the lips is the source of the sound for a trumpet. So, what we have to figure out is that's the source of the sound, where is the resonance? Where's the empty space? If you think about your body, much of it is just kind of like, you know, meat and bone and, and stuff. So where the resonance happens and takes place is everywhere from here to here when it comes out of your mouth. So let's talk about what that means. Where sound resonates are a couple different places uh, called the pharynx. Here's your larynx, and just above is the pharynx. There are three parts to the pharynx. The first is the, we'll call this the pharynx, and then above that we call the oropharynx. The oropharynx is just at the back of the throat, um, and then just above that, at the back of the nasal passages, we call the nasopharynx. So, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll have to go to singingtv.com to see it, but I'll attach a uh, a link to a picture where you can see a really nice uh, kind of view of a cross-section of what that looks like so you can see the empty spaces. But the empty space that we have in our head is this. We know from every time that we get sick and every time we get a cold that the back of the nose and the back of the throat are connected. How do you know? Because every time you go and you're really really sick and you've got all that mucus, mucus goes from your nose back of the throat and then you swallow it or you huck a loogie or you spit it out or whatever. So now we know, we can sort of intellectually understand that the back of the nose and the back of the throat are connected. Um, and that's where we have the oropharynx and then we have the oral cavity, 
the mouth. And then in the back of the nasal passages, we have the nasopharynx, and then we have the nasal cavity, which is up your nose, and then all these passages behind. Believe it or not, it's those spaces, and that's where the sound resonates. So, let's prove the point. If you sing, let me get my screen empty. If you sing, what happens is, you'll notice, obviously, all the air comes out of your mouth. I'll breathe on the phone so you can see it fog up. Fogged? Yes, I think so. Fogged. Okay, what we don't necessarily know is that if you hum, mm, where is the sound coming out? Where's the air coming out? See if you can think about it for a sec. All right, if I'm humming, my mouth is closed, so air can't come out of my mouth. It goes up through my vocal folds, up my trachea, and into the mouth. Mouth is closed, so it bounces back and goes up into my nasal passages and out my nose. To prove this point, I'm gonna hum, and you're gonna see the, uh, the phone fog up. See that? Disappearing. Okay, now, try it yourself. Just hum and put your hand in front of your nose. Mm, you'll feel the breath come out warm. And that's how you know that it's working. Uh, so what I want you to notice the difference now is if we're talking about resonance, basically I want you to be able to feel and hear the difference between those different spaces and where the sound is resonating. We feel the sound resonating in different places than it actually is. For instance, we feel in the chest like the sound is resonating in the chest. You go, ah. If you sing in the lower part of your chest voice and you feel your chest, you'll feel vibration there. Ah. Try it and put your hand in your chest. Ah. You'll feel the vibration. And if you go, ah. You'll feel it much less in your chest and you'll sense it in your head. But where the sound actually gets moving and gets sounding is in the pharynx, the oropharynx and the nasopharynx, as well as the mouth and the nasal passages. So that's something to think about for now. I think that's basically the end of our lesson on resonance. What we'll get to later is how to use that resonance. Thanks so much. This is singingtv.com. Together you and I, we're making singing simple.